we're moving right along. Remember, in this video, we are only giving you a very brief overview of these techniques. And when we do webinars for the DHS acquisition community, we'll do an hour and a half on a single technique. So yes, we're moving very fast, but we hope you can see that these techniques really can help make our acquisitions faster and increase our confidence in selecting the best contractor for the work. You may want to look more closely at the Pill Bootcamp workbook or even actual sample solicitations that have utilized these techniques to learn more. The four techniques we have already discussed may be used for all four of our standard acquisition methods. Simplified acquisitions, source selections, ordering against schedule contracts, and ordering against multiple award IDIQ contracts. But technique five, comparative evaluation, really doesn't fit for source selections, so we recommend it only for simplified acquisitions, ordering against schedule contracts, and ordering against multiple award IDIQ contracts. Remember in Technique 3, Confidence Ratings, we talked about using a three-tier adjectival rating system instead of the five-tier traditional system. Now, let's talk about using no ratings at all. If we don't even assign adjectival ratings, then we won't lose any time in the review process for justifying, defending, and rewriting those ratings. We've all heard that we're not supposed to compare offers to each other. That's true for a source selection under FAR subpart 15.3, but for this technique, we're not talking about source selections. We're talking about simplified acquisitions, ordering against scheduled contracts, and ordering against multiple award IDIQ contracts. That's right. This technique works best when we have a few non-price evaluation factors and a few offerors, like maybe up to five factors and up to five quotes or offerors, but there's no hard number. To walk through one way to approach this technique, let's look at a notional technical evaluation report template. For this sample, you see that we have three non-price evaluation factors, numbered one, two, and three, and you can see that we have three quoters, A, B, and C. You may press pause if you want to look at this template more closely. This is just a template. Using this template, the evaluator or evaluation team will start with factor one and write its observations, good and bad, for quote A with a few bullet points. Then it would do the same for quotes B and C. No adjectival ratings are assigned, just the observations that are pertinent for that factor. Then the evaluation team compares all three quotes for factor one and identifies the quote that is the most advantageous to the government and explains why. In this sample, Let's say that quote A is most advantageous. Then the team does the same thing for factors two and three. In this sample, let's just say that quote B is most advantageous for factor two and quote A for factor three. And that's it, the technical evaluation report is done. So the technical evaluation report goes to the selecting official who will do the trade-off to select the best value to the government. Here is a notional template for a trade-off decision document using the sample Trevor just described. Look at the table towards the top of the document. Here you can see the three non-price factors, numbered one, two, and three, with the addition of price as factor four. You can also see the three quotes, A, B, and C. The check marks identify which quote is most advantageous for each factor. You can see that quote A is most advantageous for factors one and three, and quote B is most advantageous for factor two, as Trevor explained in the sample, and quote C is most advantageous for factor four. The selecting official reads a technical evaluation report and also sees the prices, and he or she makes a trade-off decision. There are three possible decisions that could be made, and this template shows, in simple terms, a format for any of those three possible decisions. Quote A could be selected as the best value if the selecting official agrees with the evaluation team's assessment and decides that the technical merit of quote A for factors one and three justifies paying the price premium associated with quote A. Quote B could be selected as the best value if the selecting official decides that the technical merit for quote B for factor two provides more value than factors one and three, and he or she is not willing to pay the price premium for quote A. And quote C could also be selected. 
It isn't the most advantageous for any of the non-price factors, but it could still be entirely acceptable. And if so, and if the selecting official doesn't see all that much technical merit in the other quotes or isn't willing to pay the price premium for quote A or quote B, then quote C is the winner. This becomes the trade-off decision document and you're done. This technique can be very powerful and very fast. We don't get hung up on assigning and defending adjectival ratings. We've seen this technique used for many schedule orders for many millions of dollars. For example, a DHS team used this approach to award a $53 million task order in just 42 days from release of the RFQ to the award. There are other ways to do comparative evaluation. We shared one way. If a Homeland Security acquisition team wants to use this technique and they'd like the pill to support their procurement, we will help them figure out the best approach to fit their acquisition.